Um, I guess for your reference, we'll use this a little bit more later in the class. I found a demo that I was thinking of writing it myself, except I realized it's such a standard one that somebody would have done it already. So uh, there is something called, now, especially now that you have access to Mathematica, um, there is something called the Ulfram Demonstrations Project. Um, just Google search Ulfram Demonstrations Project. You'll find a bunch of great examples of physics, chemistry, math, whatever. Um, I found this by searching for Lorentz transformation, and I think this is the one that um, it's pretty good. Uh, by the way, the CDF file, you can use that even if you don't have Mathematica. There's a free player out there. But if you have Mathematica, what's nice is you can download the author code. You can download uh, the few lines of code that actually went into generating this using Mathematica. And you can tweak things if you want you to. I've already done all that before class, downloaded it, opened it up on Mathematica. And you know, there's all this code initialization. And actually, this graphic that you are going to see, this is all the code that went into generating the graphic. Mathematica is a pretty powerful tool that can do a lot of the, this, uh, I guess the function was probably defined in the initialization code. But um, anyways, so it's not, um, for something what it accomplishes, it, there's a very little programming there that, um, Anyway, so um, this is a way of kind of visualizing what we are, what I was drawing by hand here. So let me do first with the time dilation since that's kind of easier to see. So um, some of the things that are being illustrated here, this is the, so right now the relative velocity is zero, so both reference frames have the same, the perpendicular x and time axis. And um, this red dot is uh, marking up a point, an event uh, in space time. And so you have some time coordinate there. And um, when you imagine looking at this as a reference frame that's moving relative to, um, to I guess, where this event is, where this event is happening at the same location as x equal to zero, then this is what it would look like. So, wait, what is it doing? Sorry, um, I should have tried this before. Um, okay, okay, so I, sorry, I misunderstood. The blue, um, the blue dot that you see, it represents the moving of the clock. So, um, so imagine, so you, this is what you're comparing. We have a clock. That's going to count on one, two, three, four seconds. Good, and it's um, the clock is going to start moving relative to you, and you're still going to look at how long does it take for it to count on four seconds. And if you are look, looking at the clock moving relative to you at I don't know half the speed of light, you will find that even then the effect is not that great. So if it's moving at half the speed of light relative to you. Then let me do this grid line. Sorry, too many, a lot of grid lines here. <laughs> so the red grid line is the, the one at rest, the lap frame. And the blue grid line is still showing, you know, one, two, three, four seconds that the clock is counting. And the red grid line is now showing, okay, it doesn't quite take four seconds. It takes four and, I don't know, 4.7 or 4.8 seconds. Um, so, so this is for something that's moving at half the speed of light. And you can un quite understand why people didn't notice this effect before. Like, you know, if something is moving at 10% of speed of light, is that a lot? Is that mo moving pretty fast, 10% of speed of light? Yeah, it's a, so speed of light is a 300 million meters per second. 10% is th still 30 million meters per second. We don't have anything that moves that fast, sh uh, short of you know, small particles. We don't have any spaceships that move that fast. And when you look at that, it's uh, like the effect is almost unmeasurable. But once it's at you know, half the speed of light, then the effect is measurable. And um, uh, close enough to half. And when it's at, I don't know, point, well, well. So there's no limit. As the speed of light gets close to one, 
or you know, as this fraction gets close to one, the time dilation can, um, it's a question of how large can gamma be as beta approaches one? Infinity is the limit, right? To this time dilation factor, well, infinity is the limit. <laughs> it's uh, as large as you can make it. Um, all right. So that's uh, for time. So for time dilation, it's uh, quite simple. Nothing, at least for now, nothing appears paradoxical. I'll mention something that will point out the paradox a little bit more clearly. Um, let's have you look at length contraction. So this is the length contraction picture. Oh, I guess maybe before I say anything, let me just try this. All right, that's good enough. <laughs> um, so this is the red is the stationary ruler, and the blue is going to be the moving ruler. And let's say you are trying to take a picture of each ruler at time equals zero, at t prime equal to zero. Yeah. Then you know the red ruler is sort of red ruler. Red ruler is what it appears as at t equals zero. And if you took a picture of the moving ruler at t prime equal to zero and represented on this space-time diagram, this is how it would, so right now it's at rest, so it appears exactly the same. Let's say it's moving at half the speed of light. If it's moving at half the speed of light, then this is what it should look like. The picture of the moving ruler that you took, it, um, so at t prime, so you take the picture. Let's say you have a guy who's moving with the ruler, and you ask him very carefully, at t prime equal to zero, please take a picture or please flash the ruler so that you can see the how the flash, it, um, and then you can see those spots of light as the ruler is being illuminated all at once at t prime equal to zero. In your own reference frame, this is what you would see you would see one end of the ruler illuminated before. And then over time, the rest of the ruler illuminated. The guy who was moving with the ruler didn't make a mistake. From his reference frame, it was simultaneous. But from your reference frame, because simultaneity is relative, it's not. And so if you are measuring these two positions, then, um, then you, know, you would see that as, um, well, that's longer than my ruler. You know, this point, position here, this position here, that's longer than my ruler, but that's not the correct interpretation. It's, uh, um, the, the, because um, like measuring this point and then later this point, the, it doesn't constitute a length measurement in your reference frame. In your reference frame, you have to wait for this point to come down here and, um, so you have to measure them both ends at the sim you have to measure both ends simultaneously. So that means measuring this end at this time and measuring this end at this time. And when I bring the uh, grid lines back, then you know from when this was at rest, at rest it was at um, something close to oh I don't know okay uh, close to two or two grid lines, and as it's moving, you will see those red dots. That's the length measurement in your reference frame getting um, shorter and shorter, once again, without limit. Can be, um, uh, although this you will never see with the macroscopic objects because we don't have spaceships going at 99% of speed of light. So yeah, so this is the visual illustration, and I will tell you that this is the, so, Special relativity uh, didn't make a lot of sense to me until I saw space-time diagram. That's really my biggest complaint against Gian Colley, which used to be our textbook, that it doesn't treat space-time diagram. And I suspect uh, our new textbook is also similar. It doesn't treat space-time diagram. So uh, let me write up a note that you can read. Uh, I think this is actually pretty important. Uh, last year, when I taught this class for the first time, I. Um, he exerted the chapters from a textbook called the Tipler, which is actually pretty good for special relativity and modern uh, quantum mechanics. But uh, I don't want to make you pay $200 to just buy that book. Uh, 